All right, let's see what's going on. This week in the news, Hurricane Hannah is making its way through Texas. Donald Trump says he doesn't have enough time to throw the first pitch at the Yankees game. North Korea finally acknowledges their first case of the coronavirus. Uh-huh, sure. I won't be talking about absolutely any of that because I'm not Philip DeFranco. My name is Edmund and I'm going to be talking about the stories that I personally found interesting. And if you're anything like me, then you'll find them interesting too. So let's get into it. This is the What You Missed Weekly. So first of all, the year is 2020 and Karens are just barely discovering Adult Swim. I was going to make a joke about how parents should you know, actually maybe parent their kids, but it turns out Adult Swim clap back for themselves. If this is what set the Karens off, could you imagine if they actually caught their children sneaking down to watch some of their other programming, kind of like we did? I mean, Courage the Cowardly Dog is weirder than this shit, and that was just on Cartoon Network. In other TV news, The Legend of Korra is coming to Netflix next month. And for you Star Wars fans, Disney Plus just announced a series potentially starring Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian. Speaking of announcements, we had quite a few of them this week in gaming. Personally, the news that I found the most exciting is that of a spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio called Bomb Rush Cyberfunk being in the works. The cherry on top of this is that the original composer for Jet Set Radio is on board for the project as well. And when you have someone like Hideki Naguma throwing shade at Sega for not delivering on what the fans want, that's gonna be a massive dub for Team Reptile, the developers who also delivered on the indie hit Lethal League Blaze. Which was inspired in part by Ryuta Ueda's street art style in JSR. Bomber Cyberfunk has only been announced for Steam so far and no release date has been given, but you can pre order it for some time in the future. On the other hand, the Xbox Games Showcase happened. Okay, alright, I mean, they showed off Halo Infinite, which looks like it's open world. But I haven't played a Halo game since Halo 2, and I doubt that's going to be enough to bring me back. They also showed off a pretty cool cinematic for what's essentially Fable 4, and that seems to be the most promising reveal to me from Microsoft, but like, dude, come on. Halo just looks like Halo. This is supposed to be the next gen? I think I'll pass. So that's what's up in the realm of gaming. But wait, no Smash? That's what I'm going to call this little section where I talk about Nintendo Direct and really any Nintendo related news. Speaking of Smash, Smash is so sick, one person decided to hop on Photoshop and protect the entire roster with their own personalized face masks. My personal favorite is Dr. Mario who went above and beyond to add a face shield as part of his personal protection equipment. Also, the latest DLC fighter, Min Min from Nintendo's original IP, ARMS, was finally released about a month ago, and the competitive community has been kind of quiet on that front. Anyways, on Monday night, Nintendo actually did announce a Direct for the following morning. Being on the West Coast, that came at 7am for me. As if I wasn't going to get enough sleep already, I mean, <laughs> you, of of course I'm going to get up for this shit because I love you. It was a small but somewhat substantial update in my opinion. They showed off the new DLC for Cadence of Hyrule, a new online multiplayer third person shooter called Glitch, which honestly looked pretty cool. Most notably was the big news that Shin Megami Tensei 4 is going to be ported to the Switch, as well as the reveal of the latest addition to the series, Shin Megami Tensei 5, being announced. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the franchise, 
Basically, if it wasn't for SMT, we would not have Persona. There was never any mention of Nintendo showing off any first party titles, yet despite this, the Direct was met with mixed reception from Nintendo fans. And giving us more evidence that the people who roleplay as the Phantom Thieves online are the f***ing worst. If you ask me, this really seemed like a, but wait, no Smash moment? And Jesus, you guys are dumb. I mean, they even added a game mode for Persona fans. You gotta at least try it out. Finally, to cap off this little Nintendo segment, let's talk about some of the recent rumors surrounding the well-beloved but forgotten F-Zero franchise and hackers' latest discoveries within the game files of the original Super Mario 64. Recently, a protected Twitter handle for F-Zero was discovered. It featured a recovery email that seemingly matched Nintendo's .jp address, but the real reason it caught the attention of so many is the fact that it was created back in March at the same time as the Super Mario 35th Twitter page which was discovered not long before the F-Zero find. It turns out it was some master troll who created the account four months ago in an effort to create a fake leak. Since then, the F-Zero account has tweeted its first message in the form of a video which is not very on brand for Nintendo. Honestly, got him. Masterfully executing what I can only call the greatest version of a Rick Roll for the F-Zero community I've ever seen. It's actually not graphic, so I'll link the tweet in the description below, but uh, yeah, you'll see. I know how desperate you F-Zero fans are for any morsel of news surrounding your idol and king, Captain Douglas J. Falcon, so don't worry, I'll throw you a bone. Falcon the voice actor for the famous Falcon we all know and have a love-hate relationship with because of Smash recently posted a video where he talked about the captain and his role in Smash. He said when he was called into the recording studio, he thought he would be re-recording the same 20-year-old lines that he's been doing since Smash 64. But instead, he recorded slurping sounds. <laughs> So it's not all bad news for Falcon fans. You also got some very early designs from F-Zero X, as the source code of the game leaked about a day ago, along with leaks for early prototypes and demos for other Nintendo 64 titles. Most notably, the code for Super Mario 64 has revealed that Luigi was at some point considered to be in the game. It took 24 years for Super Mario 64 fans to discover this secret, Something that's been rumored and memed about for decades. Nintendo really just put out a direct with SMT, but we're over here popping off about Luigi in the year 2020. <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course we are. We're Nintendo fans. But that's pretty much it for Nintendo this week. Comic-Con at Home began on Wednesday, and although cosplay was completely optional this year, we did get some pretty exciting news that the OG gaming TV network, G4, will be returning sometime in 2021. Also, the renowned Japanese horror mangaka, Junji Ito, teased at a possible collaboration between him and the famous game designer, Daddy Kojima-san. Lastly, since we're already on the topic of goblins and ghouls, I just wanted to say that I personally have been playing Ghost of Tsushima for the past week, and to put things simply, it's basically Breath of the Wild with Samurai. But seriously, that's a gross simplification. So if you want to see what it's really about, be sure to check out my Twitch streams where I'll be playing the game live. Speaking of Twitch, Twitch is always on the news, and even if it isn't always favorable, I wanted to dedicate a little section in my show. And that section is called Twitch Be Tweakin. In 2019, Mixer stole Twitch's biggest creator and signed a multi-year, multi-million dollar exclusive deal with Tyler Ninja Blevins. After all is said and done, Mixer has failed and is now fusing with Facebook Gaming, while Ninja has not yet returned to Twitch and is instead streaming on YouTube for the time being. Twitch ain't hurting though, as they decided to really sling their on the table as they sign an exclusive deal with an actual celebrity. The rapper Logic has also recently decided to retire and had this to say in the interview with Verge. I'm not this rapper guy, man. I'm just a nerd. I love video games. 
I'm blessed enough to have millions of fans and followers, so it's a great partnership. I'm going to bring new eyes to their service, and they're going to bring new money to my bank account. I'm just kidding. But he's really not just kidding. I mean, it's a seven-figure deal. The dude hasn't even gone live yet, and he already has over 246,000 followers on Twitch. Logic also just dropped his final album, No Pressure, on Friday. Anime such as Cowboy, Bebop, Try Gun, and Samurai Champ Blue were in constant rotation during the making of this album. And I have to say that I'm totally getting New Jabez vibe from No ID's production. In other Twitch news, a teenager allegedly spent $20,000 of their parents' money on Twitch donations without them knowing, and Twitch had to tell the US Army to stop preying on teenagers by linking them to a fake giveaway for an Xbox controller and then redirecting them to their recruitment page instead. Okay, seriously, what the f***? But I think the biggest piece of Twitch-related news is still very much up in the air. Ever since Twitch mysteriously banned their top creator on June 26, there have been tons of rumors and speculations regarding the reasons for his ban. However, Twitch hasn't come out with any sort of update regarding the situation. And we didn't hear from the diplomalist doctor for about three weeks until he finally posted a cryptic music clip on his social media and then met with CNN, Washington Post, and PC Gamer for interviews in which he sustained that Twitch had not told him what he was banned for. Now we're getting reports that one of his top moderators from his Discord group reposted an old status of Dr. Disrespect that said, The engine is roaring and we just fueled up. Think about it. All of this just leads us to speculate whether the doctor will be making a return to streaming or not, and whether he'll be choosing YouTube or Facebook gaming as his platform of choice. And to stir the pot a little bit more, fans are creating theories that Dr. Disrespect and Ninja will be teaming up for something big. And to add fuel to the flame, the domain drdisrespect.com now redirects to Team Ninja's website. However, the domain was purchased back in 2016, so this could possibly be the work of yet another expert troll. For the final piece of gaming news, I promise, I swear, I wanted you guys to tech out this chair collaboration between Logitech and Herman Miller. It's absolutely stunning, and despite the $1,500 price tag, if you know anything about Herman Miller, you'll know that their cheapest chairs will kick any gaming chair's ass. I mean, shit. Get yourself one of these chairs and maybe you'll even jump from bronze to silver in Valorant. So that's where I'm going to end the show tonight. If you have any questions or remarks about the stories mentioned in this video, be sure to check the description box below for links with further context. Also, if there was anything that I missed and you have suggestions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. If you just want to connect with me for any other reason, check the description box below for a link to my Discord server where I'm always going to be available. And then, of course, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to receive more updates like these. Hopefully, I'll see you next week. Peace.